The second question, as mentioned in my first acquaintance with poets, which poet does William Hazlitt describe as the only person I ever knew who answered the idea of a man of genius? Your first option is Coleridge, Wordsworth, Byron or Shelley. The right answer is Coleridge. Hazlitt mentioned Coleridge as the only person I ever knew who answered the idea of a man of genius. My first acquaintance with poets is an article by Hazlitt published in 1823. Make sure you remember the date. These are some of the prose work we can say. Their dates are most of the time asked. Is a romantic periodical called The Liberal. So, my first acquaintance with a poet is an article by Hazlitt published in 1823 in a romantic periodical. There was a romantic periodical called The Liberal in which it was published. So, the right option is A. Coleridge. The question 3. Which one of the following essays holds that as a method, realism is a complete failure? Which of the following essay holds that as a method, realism is a complete failure? I hope this uh, this concept of realism came in the age of Victorian, uh, in the age of Victoria. Yeah. So your first option is uh, Virginia Woolf, The Mark on the Wall, Oscar Wilde, The Decay of Lying, D.S. Lawrence, Why the Novel Matters, Mary McCarthy, My Confessions. The right answer is Oscar Wilde's The Decay of Lying talks of realism as a complete failure. It was published in 1891 in a collection of essays by Wilde. So option B is the right one here. Question 4. What is the subject of Ivan's controversial essay in Brothers Karamzo? This is an important novel, a philosophical novel, a groundbreaking work by the uh, Dostoevsky. So your first option is transubstantiation, the evil of clergy, the Eucharist, Eucharist, D, ecclesiastical courts. Which one is the right option here? The right one is the ecclesiastical courts. Now let's talk about this novel a bit. Ivan's controversial essay in Brother Karamzo by Fyodor Dostoevsky is a deliberation upon ecclesiastical courts set in a 19th century Russia. The Brother Karamzo is a passionate philosophical novel that enters deeply into questions of God, free will and morality. It is a theological drama dealing with problems of faith, doubt and reason in the context of a modernizing Russia with a plot that revolves around the subject of patricide. Dostoevsky composed much of the novel in Staria Rusa. This is one of the towns in Russia. And I will tell you, advise you to cover other important works like Crime and, Push, uh, like Crime and Punishment and The Idiot by the father of Dostoevsky, right? So let's move on further. Uh, which one among the following is a set of the metaphysical poets? Which one among the following is a set of the metaphysical poets? Your option A, John Dryden, George Herbert and Alexander Pope. Augustine age, Alexander Pope is easy to pick out. B, Henry Vaughan, John Dryden, again new classic. John Dunn, Henry Vaughan, Andrew Marvel, this makes sense. Samuel Johnson, uh -uh. T.S. Eliot, Modern, Herbert Grierson. So the right option is obviously is C here. Right? Uh, so metaphysical poets uh, write on weighty. Here we are discussing that what this metaphysical is, how this term came into existence. Right? And what the person has to say who coined the term metaphysical poet. Metaphysical poets write on weighty topics such as love and religion using complex metaphors. Metaphysical poets write on weighty topics such as love and religion using complex metaphors, like making it so sophisticated, right? Higher level, which is out of the reach of common people, you know, in such a way writing it. 
the word metaphysical is a combination of the prefix of meta meaning after with the word physical the phrase which means after physical refers to something that cannot be explained by science the term metaphysical poets was first coined by the writer samuel johnson in a chapter from his lives of the poets right entitled metaphysical wit there was a chapter in the lives of the poet which is titled as a metaphysical wit in 1779 metaphysical poets here what he says in this in this in this chapter the metaphysical poets were men of learning and to show their learning was their whole endeavor but unluckily resolving to show it in rhyme instead of writing poetry they only wrote verses and very often such verses as stood the trial of the finger better than of the ear right for the modulation was so imperfect that they were only found to be verses by counting the syllables so many a time you get this question there right that that metaphysical poets were the men of learning who said this and to show their learning was their whole endeavor so this is samuel johnson right and where he talks about them in the chapter metaphysical wit which is in the the lives of poets published in the 1779 there were 52 poets in all right so let's move further question 6 who said of the blank verse quoting an unnamed critique that it is verse only to the eye adding further that it has neither the easiness of prose nor the melody of number who said about this the blank verse right john dryden Alexander Pope, Samuel Tyler Coleridge or Samuel Johnson. It was Samuel Johnson, right? The quote is taken from Lives of the Poets by Samuel Johnson. It's a work about the lives of 52 poets and comprises their comprises their biographies and his critical appraisal of their work so the first poet in these 52 poets were mentioned there the first poets he writes about he talks about it the abraham cole right and the final one the 52 the the 50 uh, poet right uh, who was there is george lord littleton is here d because he was in the favor of uh, these uh, three kinds of poetry religious philosophical and imaginative in his essay an apology for poetry he said this as the name suggests it was written in defense of the arts right so let's talk about something here a very uh, the idea of this apology for poetry so it is also known as the defense of uh, defense of poesy when it was published the first time in the 1595 even though it was written in the 1580 or around 1582 but it was published posthumously in the 1595 it was published with the name of the defense of poesy but then the another edition came of this work and there it was it was titled as an apology for poetry considered the finest work of elizabethan literary criticism sydney's elegant essay suggests that literature is a better teacher than history or philosophy that poetry is above history and philosophy All right history is about fact philosophy is about idea but poetry is also about feelings emotions have the ability to influence people right and it masterfully refutes plato's infamous decision to ban poets from the state in his republic and that is because of they they were seeing this one side of side of poetry which is emotional right which 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 talks about only only the wrong aspects of it or where they try to indulge people in the love or hate aggression through the through the different feelings but the, but the poetry has its different side as well where it influences people where it where it talks about uh, uh, taking them one step ahead in their life right influencing them in the positive manner and not the way these modern uh, modern poets are doing they are just talking about love or hate or uh, 
other other things except the deep fundamentals right and he also gives some of the suggestions here okay so written as a reply to stephen gozon the school of abuse in 1579 so against this it was a reply from the sir philip sidney you must remember some of these things there's a lot more things to it uh, which i have covered in in my notes of literary criticism right i mean each and everything is covered in the detailed manner over there i have just recently updated them so let's talk about the so the question 8 is herald skimpole is a character in option a bleak house option b dombey and son 1848 option c great expectation 1861 and option d oliver twist 1838 i have given these dates very deliberately here because the half of the question paper is based on the objective details and half of the question is based on the subjective details right in objective details you have to cover everything like your chronological type questions which writer has wrote which book which character which quote which theorist has propounded the which term which critic wrote the which book in this kind you have to match their works you have to match the characters you have to match the dates you have to match the terms 50% of the question is just based on that the names the dates the terms the books the theories the, the theorist and the criticism it is just based on that then the 50% of it is the objective uh, the subjective kind where you have reason and assertion where you have the comprehension where you have to know more about that what does this novel say where you have to read the whole book and not at least the whole book but i want you to read its analysis i want to read some of the scholarly articles which are uh, are available there right for for objective details i don't uh, i i am not bragging about myself but i would say that my notes is one of the best way to go ahead with the objective details right uh, for subjective it's it's never enough for subjective it's never enough you read as much as you want like i would say you must have heard this uh, interview you you must have watched this interview on uh, on delhi digital track uh, what is the channel uh, what is the name of the channel where this jrf uh, topper diksha i think her name she she discussed each and every single thing and even though i said in my in my in my video my my first video uh, that how you should prepare for this exam like search each and every single option search the subject of the question on on google and read it if you do it in this way in your very first attempt it will just take around 6 month because it will take this much you have to cover a lot you have to discover each and every single thing you have to cover your past years uh, 16 to 17 years uh, years question papers right in 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 a very detailed manner there are a lot of people who just uh, who just look for the answer of the question and and that's it no this is not the way to solve it the way i told you 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 just uh, search each and every single option and write down the details there are some novels there are some texts there are some dramas which are really important for example you're waiting for godo you are being asked that uh, with the, uh, with what what dialogue this uh, this play starts who is the person who says the first dialogue and uh, what is the first thing that the character is doing like what is in the bag that is lucky carrying like uh, uh, right so there are a lot of questions like this that you can know only if you read their whole analysis at least their big summaries like on spark notes on lit chart on great savior you have to do that like there are a lot of people who are asking me to provide them the study material like this everything they just have to study that i have i can copy paste it there are a lot of people like one of my friend bought this uh, notes from this one person and that i have seen their like this copy pasted the whole summaries from the spark notes and for great savior why don't you just tell these people to go there and do it by themselves rather than just squeezing their money in but i would say that uh, if you are if you want to prepare for this objective kind my notes is one of the best way to be out there and they are in the budget for sure it's just the cost is 90 50 rupees because i know that it's really hard to pay a lot of a lot of amount for everyone because most of you are just the aspirants right and rest it depends upon you if you have a lot of time so you can go ahead on your own all right so let's move on further mm, the answer of it the herald skim poll is a character in uh, as the options we have given here these four options 
and the right answer is is your bleak house so herald skimpole this is character is commonly regarded as a portrait of lay hunt in uh, a character in charles dickens bleak house which is published in the 1853 it chronicles the gerandais family uh, and raises of law and inheritance so it was a case there going on right about the will and its beneficiaries from a really long time and uh, so the novel is a pointedly critical of england's court of chancery in which cases could drag on through decades of complex legal work these work are just going on right without any ending so at the if we talk about the other characters here so the uh, the, the two beneficiary who 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 have the benefit of uh, of that money of that amount uh, which they get is the uh, is the ada and the richardson but the thing is the uh, the lawsuit cost was more than the amount they were getting you know uh, i mean throughout this whole journey of this legal process the cost of amount they have to pay more than the amount they were getting so richard collapsed and there is a one character nemo uh, in this novel whose name means uh, nothing right so the another character is the asther asther and she is the heroine right and uh, she is the daughter of the lady deadlock with the nemo uh, but no one has any idea of it in the middle of the novel they they met each other okay this is a really interesting novel uh, i'm just telling you all these things because these characters are important as well because when we listen something so we remember that for a very long long period of time so the few characters which i share with you is the lady deadlock uh lady deadlock and uh, the affair she had with the nemo whose name means uh, means nothing and they had a daughter called asther who is the heroine here the two beneficiaries of this of this gerandais lawsuit is the ada and richardson okay so these are some of the things that you have to remember here but i i would say that you you must read it or if you don't want to read it so i have just mentioned all of the important novel at least all the novels of of charles dickens in my notes right if you want to have them i will give uh, it's a uh, the contacts in the description box you you can contact me there all right so the right option is a bleak house so the right option is obviously is c here right uh so metaphysical poets uh write on witty here we are discussing that what this metaphysical is how this term came into existence right and what the person has to say who coined the term metaphysical poet metaphysical poets write on weighty topics such as love and religion using complex metaphors metaphysical poets write on weighty topics such as your book 9 so let's talk about what this book 9 is right in a quite a detailed manner so book 9 details the climax of adam and eve's story the fall of men this is the book in which we see that the eve is persuaded by satan to eat that fruit of knowledge which is grown on the tree of knowledge right satan is persuading her to eat that right so this is the story we find in the book 9 so book 9 details the climax of adam and eve's story the fall of men the story begins with a satan who has been in hiding after being banished from the garden of eden satan sneaks back into the garden disguised as a mist once inside the garden he transforms into a snake satan finds eve alone and speaks to her in the form of a serpent eve asks him how he learned to speak and satan tells her about eating fruit that gave him the power to speak and understand everything and we have this desire to know everything to taste everything to touch everything we are human and he put his finger on that nerve and he played with her whichever way he wants to right he offers to show her where to find the fruit and leads her to the tree of knowledge eve recognizes it as the tree from which god has forbidden her and adam to eat but he persuaded her he tells that the if she will eat this 
a fruit of knowledge she will get the knowledge which is required to become the goddess right so in this way in this manner he persuaded her, her and she eats it right so this is the book 9 they are uh, all the 12 books right very soon i'll be making a video on paradise alone because this is really important to deconstruct this whole work this is really important to know each and every character each and every book in the detailed manner right because it 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 becomes really it it becomes uh, really 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 tough for a creator to create such a huge uh, such a huge content right like investing his time and energy then uploading it on youtube and then they like the people like mostly they don't appreciate the effort they 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 see it yes it's available like just move ahead and just find the another content but you will never be able to find a quality content until or unless you start appreciating the effort of someone right who is who who is doing it for free but or uh, if you are not appreciating then you will just keep finding all that content which makes no sense right so very soon i'll be making a video on uh, this uh, paradise lost where we will talk about each and every single uh, uh, single character of it and all the 12 books of it all right so let's talk about the question 10 who makes the following speech in samuel beckett's waiting for godo astride of a grave and a difficult birth down in the hole lingeringly the grave digger puts on the forceps right so such a quotes do you think that will you be able to cover it up from like anyone's study material for objective type is okay you want to have it okay but for subjective for objective kind you buy it you have any any book or something this is okay but for subjective kind of questions you have to read its summary its analysis on google you have to read the scholarly notes no one there is not even a one single person in whole india right now who can give you this much detail in just each and every single novel and each and every single drama this this should be your interest right you have to go into the into the depth of these things this is only you don't rely on someone else it can be anyone on youtube i don't want to name them right it can be anyone but you will whosoever you found out there right even though this time diksha she did it on her own right that's why i'm telling you so find the scholarly articles there read the analysis on your spark notes great savior this will help you immensely i'm telling you right buy the books read them okay not the novels but the other like a william j long or like a b prasad these are important terry gilton you uh, sorry not that not the terry gilton but that uh, book for your theory right so read those books have the idea of it not merely the objective knowledge because this exam is becoming more tough each and every single year because now the level will enhance it will never decrease right and there are a lot of students who have question about it what about uh, this net uh, now the phd has become very compulsory like if there is a person who has phd in net so he has more chances to get selected than the person who just have the phd only the another thing the phd is compulsory and in my uh, in my opinion doing phd from the from the government university is one of the is one of the best way to go ahead because in private university they will just be squeezing your money they will try to unnecessarily stretching the time period from 2 to 3 3 to 6 it takes long time right so it's better to do take any subject completed within within 2 or 3 years from any government university where which is more cheaper around 1000 or uh, maybe a fee will be of yours right so if you have your net you directly sit in the interview if you are able to qualify your entrance exam which is of the equal level of the net i think it is quite tough uh, so you give it sit in the interview and uh, do your phd i think this is the best way but net is still valuable if you want to like if you have net and if you want to teach in the any private colleges you go there you teach earn your money be self independent right
this is what we want to do this is what we want to be right this is just an exam to to be at that position because throughout our life we just don't want to keep preparing for this exam right we hate it i even hate it right who love just keep keep preparing for a one single exam you know throughout their life throughout their young age when this is the time to explore more and more things so question 10 is who makes the following speech in samuel beckett's waiting for godo as tried off a grave and a difficult birth down in the hole lingering ling the grave digger puts on the forceps and the option is estragon lucky vladimir pozo and the right answer is vladimir so with this i have made a video on waiting for godo that's why i didn't uh, uh, discussed this play on a length in the short detailed manner here so you can check out that video i will given its link below in the description box all right so till then time this is it from me bhupesh sharma now my professor note signing off so keep studying keep preparing keep the consistency have that have that discipline greatness is coming this is the only way to be ahead consistency and discipline till then time once again my professor note signing off